artificial intelligence and machine learning, AI and ML, are things that we've heard so much about for the last couple of months with increasing frequency. People are talking about chat GPT, they're talking about new things happening in Bing and so forth and so forth. What do they mean for us as traders? Normal traders, we're all looking for returns on our capital. What does it mean for star trader? What does it, what does it mean for you as a trader? Well, just before we rip into that, let's just look at the background. Today, Star Trader has offices in countries where five out of eight people live. So five billion out of eight billion people approximately on this planet live in a market where Star Trader has an office. That's incredible. The growth has been super, super, super fast. And you see it also in payment methods because a lot of these countries have different, multiple different payment methods that uh, enable you guys to quickly make a deposit when you see an opportunity to do some trading. Alternatively, be quickly make a withdrawal, get your money back out once you've done your thing. So payment methods are huge. We have about 200 payment methods right now in the marketplace. That's an incredible complexity. I'm delighted to say that our finance team is so strong that they can handle and manage all of these things, keep your funds secure throughout the whole thing. And it's gone beyond that because there are so many orders coming through. Buy, sell, buy, buy, sell, sell, buy, buy, sell, sell. It's going so fast that the transaction flow is so high. Sometimes people, sometimes people call it market depth or high flow, high liquidity, different words for the same thing, that big companies are now coming to us and they're using our high flow, our low latency, our capital, our security in order to offer services to their clients. So we're serving a number of other brokers now um, by offering them the use of our back end. And um, we also serve big institutional clients who want to put big flows, deal flows through our systems. We help them with things like risk management. We do training for other brokers and for big institutional clients on risk management. This has become a big new area for our business. All thanks to you. Thanks to you guys putting so much business through our systems. Now, okay, so let's go into AI. But first, before we go into AI, let's just ask ourselves, hold on. Should we humans love AI or should we not love AI? That's a big, deep question. It remains the case that if the question is broad and if the question touches multiple areas of expertise we humans are better than artificial intelligence at handling this multiplicity of tasks that's a strength that we humans have also if the number of underlying facts are very few we humans are incredibly good at handling that too compared to ai so don't worry we humans are not out of business yet we still have a role to play. And um, there, there's also a role for AI to play. Uh, I think when you go from machine learning towards AI, one of the things that happens is that um, uh, there's a, an elasticity there where uh, AI is able to do more of the things that we used to do. So, th so there's a flexibility. AI is definitely growing. It's becoming more and more important to us. Now, when we try to understand these AI models, how they work, let's look at a simple thing. I, let's look at the words, I love you. Well, those are three words. I could instead say, I you love, or uh, love you I. In fact, if you have three things, then there are six different ways in which you can organize these three words. If the input instead is from eight different things, and you can randomly put those together, then there are 40,000 different ways of combining eight things. On the left-hand side of this chart, you can see 15 arrows. If the inputs come from 15 places, then there are more than 1,000 trillion ways of combining those 15 inputs in order to generate action. That's where the AI model comes in. So these models reduce the number of alternatives. They make it all manageable for us. That's the importance of having a good model, because otherwise you're going to get too many alternatives and it's all going to be a mess. 
This is the general structure that all AI systems follow. And if we look at the language models um, that are coming out now, then we have ChatGPT, which has been built by OpenAI. We have Microsoft, Bing, Skype, and Copilot that also use OpenAI technology underneath them. Uh, these are called GPT-3 and GPT-4, these things. These are language models that are really good, these GPT-3, GPT-4 things. And on top of that, we also have the Lambda models, which are used by Google Bard. Wonderful new models. Stable diffusion is great as well. So there's, there's more stuff coming out in this area. All of these models are really clever. And what they do is they first use a big data set for training the model. And people look at the output so to see if the model is working in a good way. Then they go and change the model, use the training data again to run through the model. They check the model, they change the model. They look at the training data again with the new updated model to check the result. And once they can see that the result is good um, using the model, then they go live. And you can take random input on the left-hand side and generate an output. That's kind of how you train these models. And the models are fantastic if the goal is to give informed answers that are similar to what has been done before. This, these models are not good at totally jumping wildly from one place to another. Humans are very good at that. But if you ask kind of predictable questions, then you will get really good answers. I hmm, sound as though I'm being a little bit critical, but I'm not because these things are, in fact, very good models. You really should sign up and try them. I warmly recommend that you try ChatGPT, sign up into the queue for Microsoft, sign up into the queue for Google Bard, try to get these things. ChatGPT has been trained on the ChatGPT data, and it therefore it gives ChatGPT results. And although Microsoft is using exactly the same underlying technology, They've trained the model on Microsoft data, so therefore the results are Microsoft results instead of ChatGPT results. And the same goes for Google and everyone else, that they have their own data, they train their model, they get a result. It all depends on how you set the whole systems up. I think the right wording is to always think about collaboration. You're kind of collaborating with your model when you're trying to create your results. If I take the same model and go into computer game animation, I can take motorica.ai as one example. What these guys have done is that they looked at like a couple thousand people and how a couple of thousand people move, how they walk, how they run, how they fight. They captured that and now it's possible to use the motorica.ai model in order to generate characters for computer games. So in a computer game, you might have a young woman walking across the street. You might have um, a monster cr climbing up a ladder, or you might have a soldier running across with a gun. Um, you might have a thousand people dancing, fighting, walking, and running. And motorica.ai allows you to select the number of people, the types of people, how they should be moving how they should be doing and you end up with a whole world full of people running around and jumping and fighting and whatever else they do all of that is automated and it's an incredible thing absolutely mind-blowingly good um, yes so what does this mean what it means that we're going to see more and more films on computer games where some of the people we see are not human beings in the traditional sense they're actually just computer models so hey um, there's a lot that's going to be happening in in uh, game animation. And there's stuff happening in trading as well. So there's an AI EA club um, where data from anywhere is taken on the left hand side, put through some machine learning filters, weighted in different ways with human behavior and sector specific knowledge and so forth to find financial ratio anomalies, um, uh, various investment opportunities and so forth. There's some AI on top of that as well to actually give some advice. And ultimately you end up with outputs where you can do scenario planning and you can think freely about what's going to be happening next and so forth. This is a really exciting club. Um, I 
think it's probably full now in terms of subscription but if you're interested then um, please do contact star trader and uh, um, maybe we can form a second club to start um, replicating some of the things that's been done. Um, but it's a really cool thing. Um, it, building EAs using AI technology is, uh, I think it's a really exciting further development. Really, really nice stuff. We humans, of course, behave in a similar way. In some t on the left-hand side here, we are training ourselves. We're open to insights. We sit down with some friends. We think through what we need to do, we create a plan, maybe we're talking to our IB, maybe we're talking to our key clients, and then we switch over to the right-hand side where we're executing the model. We're, we're staying reasonable, we're sticking to our plan, and we're executing a plan. After doing that for a while, we smile, we jump onto the left-hand side, and we try to be open to insights again, and we try to think through, and the cycle continues. So the way that we operate today as human beings is kind of similar to the way that people train AI models and use AI models. Why is this relevant? Well, it's relevant because 2023 might be the biggest year ever for traders, together with 2024. Absolutely massive. We see some strange things going on at the moment, such as uh, the interest rates going up and the S&P 500 going up at the same time. That's normally not the case. Uh, so there's some really, really strange effects going on in the marketplace right now. That needs some proper thinking in order to understand what's really going on. Also, um, if we look at the last 10, 15 years, we've seen enormous quantity of easing going into practically every market in the world in order to boost investment into companies. That's not exactly the way it's worked out. Um, the central banks have at the same time kept very low interest rates, which means that the QE money has been used by banks as security for providing much bigger loans which means that the total quantity of money that's been uh, uh, made available uh, has been much greater than the QE itself. Enormous amounts of money being made available. That money has mainly gone into housing and shares, real estate and shares in many markets. Yes, some has gone into investment. Very little of that money has gone directly into inflation things. So the CPI or the con consumer price index has not gone crazy in most markets until recently. Um, but that's beginning to happen now. The reason that's happening is because a small percentage of the money that's gone into housing or real estate and shares is now leaking across into the things that make up inflation. So CPI, the consumer price index, going crazy in very many markets. Feedback to central banks. The central banks then try to increase the interest rate in order to pull down inflation. But that's difficult because pulling money back um, from the market once you've let the money out is not easy. The first thing you hit is investment. Not good. So you increase the rate of interest and you kill the industry in the country. Very, very, very difficult. Or you kill the bank like Silicon Valley Bank. Very, very difficult. So the central banks are in a very, very difficult position because they do want to increase the interest rates in order to pull down inflation. However, Doing so in such a way that kills off investment uh, is not a clever thing to do. I've heard, and I think all of us on this call have heard uh, of quantitative easing being more or less the same as quantitative tightening. You just play around with the interest rate and there it is, but it's not true. Quantitative tightening or QT is not simply quantitative easing or QE in reverse. They are very different. When you do quantitative easing, the money flushes out into real estate and shares and some investment. When you do the quantitative tightening, a lot of that money comes back disproportionately from investment. So it's difficult to do quantitative tightening. It's very, very difficult. No one knows how to do it. Um, a lot of opinions, and no one has shown us how to do it. There's no general case. Um, maybe in 10, 15 years, we will see that someone got it right, and we'll call that person a genius. But we are not there now. We simply don't know. So yeah, so all in all, in 2023, 2024, there is money in the market. There's a lot of money in the market. And one of the reasons is that um, the central banks don't know how to take back the money that's already been pumped out there. Another reason is that um, there's a lot of stimulus still coming in many countries. Um, Joe Biden, by way of example, has printed 1.2 or committed $1.2 trillion 
in the Infrastructure Act, which is going to have an effect on many companies across the world, Komatsu building big machines, Hyundai building big machines, um, big, big amount of money. Um, on top of that, um, uh, President Biden is printing $280 billion uh, for technology, which will again touch technology companies worldwide. Um, and on top of that, where there's an additional $400 billion that's been assigned for inflation reduction. Now, that feels kind of strange. First, you print $1.2 trillion, then you print $280 billion, and then you put $400 billion on top in order to prevent inflation. This sounds a little bit contradictory. Um, and um, exactly how it's going to play, I don't know. Um, maybe it leads to more market volatility but definitely it means that there's more market more money in the money in the market that there has been before from a trader's perspective hey this is wonderful and also from a trader's perspective there's another thing which is quite crazy key opinion leaders or kols are becoming increasingly important in the media landscape and that has now also come to financial assets so we're seeing more and more KOLs or celebrities endorsing financial assets. I play tennis and I would love it if Naomi Osaka would show me how to play a good backhand or hit a, 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 a proper kick serve in tennis. I would love that. I'd, I'd love Naomi to, to help me out with those things. But very respectfully, um, lovingly Naomi, Naomi, we haven't met, but I, I, don't, I don't want to take financial advice from you, uh, I, I love you as a tennis player, but you know me, you're not a financial advisor for me. I have other people who give me financial advice, so it, it's kind of different. But um, we see people uh, being provided by many of the big um, uh, celebrity management companies, Octagon, IMG, WME, just to name a few, now in order to pump assets. Uh, that is fascinating, and from a trader's perspective, that's great fun because it's a new random impact. It, it will give us more volatility, I think, in the marketplace, and that's an interesting new trend, brand new. All in all, um, <coughs> if you haven't signed up already, just try it out. Get an ECN account, a standard STP account, or maybe a cent account if you're a newbie, um, and see if you can build your business from there. Uh, the... Um, complexity of using our systems is of course there. I recommend that you talk to, our, to your dedicated account manager so that you work out what you need to use. And it depends on you. You have your starting point, you have your goal, and depending on what your starting point is and what your goal is, uh, by talking to your dedicated account manager, you'll be able to work out what's right for you. Will you want copy trade? Will you want money management, multi-level marketing? Or what is it that, that, that you're, you're gunning for in, the, in order to achieve your goals? Regardless, you're going to be shown a My Account page, which gives you graf graphical P&L analysis and special offers and transaction type drill down possibilities and account to account transfers. You'll be able to see funds um, in the PAM aspect of uh, my account. There's a lot there um, that you'll see. Um, the sign-up process is nice and simple. It's enough if you just provide your email and password in order to get a demo account, but I recommend that you go through the proof of identity and proof of address part so that you can actually use real money. You don't have to use a lot. You can use the cent account if you just want to use a couple of nickels. Uh, but, of course, if you want to be a real trader, then a standard STP account or an ECAN account is definitely where you want to be as a trader. As an introducing broker, it, it's a bit different. Um, the setup is much more customized. It's built for you. I use the word bespoke because I've lived in London most of my life, but um, the Americans would call it a custom um, process or you know, hand-built, especially for you. So drop us an email through the portal and um, tell us about your goals. Where are you? Where you want to go? and hey, let's um, build and execute a plan together. We need to make sure that you execute your plan to reach your goals. There's some more complexity when you look at things like copy trade and um, money management. Um, this slide is busy, but let me take you through the pain anyway because it's good to know. Um, if you want other people to copy your Star Trader 
trading, then great, you open an account and you set up yourself, set yourself up as a new provider. You share your strategy, make yourself available, and then um, people who want to copy you, they set up an account, um, they start up a new subscription, they select you as a provider, they select the amount that they want to put in, and they activate, which means that when you start trading, they are copying you automatically. You can then view and share your strategy, you can view and share your followers, your whatever you want to do there uh, as, uh, as a uh, master. And of course, as a follower, you can see exactly how your funds are doing at all times. And at any point in time, you can make your withdrawal nice and start again if you so wish. So that's on copy trade. For money management, Pam, Mam, and so forth, money management is different because this, again, is very, very hand-built and specialized. I call it bespoke. Americans, again, would call it custom. Great. So if you want to be a bespoke money manager, good. Emails your plan. Um, we'll set up a limited power attorney, LPOA document for you so that people who want to um, invest in your managed funds are able to do so uh, because uh, there's a piece of paperwork that needs to be done in order to allow you to operate their money on a PAM and MAM basis. Good. Um, ultimately, as a, as a follower to these things, you select the fund that you want to follow and you assign a particular amount of money into it. As a money manager, you enroll your clients, you start to trade. As a trader, you activate, boom, everything's working. Both sides see exactly what's going on. You make your withdrawal when you feel good. That looks a bit complicated. It's not so bad. So please do talk to your dedicated account manager again in order to get a nice grip on that thing. And um, as an IB, we have a customer a partner, a customized uh, partner portal, portal for you, bespoke partner portal. It's really nice. You can see everything there. You can go into new clients, review clients, volumes per client, everything in real time, multi-level effects and so forth, do internal transfers. It's all there and it's fun to do this together. Um, here's a screenshot. You can see some of the report types that you can get in real time, um, looking at new clients and reviewing clients. Um, uh, commissions, um, real time, um, really sweet, really powerful tools. Just drill in, have a look around, make notes for yourself and so forth. Go into your sub IBs if you're doing multi-level marketing, do internal transfers, take care of everything, keep everything nice and clean, real time. Wonderful control that you achieve with the customized partner portal that we provide. So yeah, if you have a plan as an IB, um, talk to your dedicated account manager, um, talk through what you're trying to do. Um, I personally always break things down into five points. What's the size of the market that you're trying to address? And within that market, exactly what type of clients are you trying to serve? What is your position to those clients? What is that you're trying to promote to those clients? How are you going to measure yourself? What are the key KPIs that you're going to be using? And if you know the market size and the clients you want to target and your propo uh, proposition, your KPIs, then set building a plan is very, very easy. And on that basis, you together with um, your dedicated account manager, you can build a budget and work out what's needed in order to succeed. Really cool things, wonderful. And you will enjoy this. I mean. Uh, uh, I work with IBs all day, every day. I work with my internal team all day, every day. Um, I feel that it's great fun. It's really terrifying fun. It's, <laughs> it's so much fun. Good. So do join us. Uh, join us now if you haven't already. And um, as I said earlier, the purpose of this call is to think about the effect of AI and ML on our business. I think it's going to be big. Um, I really warmly recommend that you sign up to ChatGPT. Um, uh, sign up to ChatGPT, sign up to Microsoft um, services, Bing, Skype, Copilot. Uh, sign up to, to Google Bard and Stable Diffusion. Try these things out. I know there are waiting lists for many of these services, but get on those waiting lists and try it out see how it works, see how it changes the way that you think. I think you'll find that it's a trip. It's really, really cool. I think these are fantastic 
tools and um, I warmly recommend that you get involved. And yeah, if, if you are interested in um, using AI as, a, as an EA club, then do talk to your dedicated account manager and uh, let's see what we can do together. All in all, thank you very much for joining us on this call. It's been a trip. I love this. I'm so enjoying 2023. I hope it's worked going really well for you as well. 2023, 2024, I think are going to be the biggest years ever for traders. Let's do it together.